Hi everyone, it's John from What Up. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're talking uh, about the Q and A that Rafe Judkins uh, did last night in Instagram. So we did one earlier this week about some of the actors and actresses that did some Q and A in Instagram, and Rafe took Instagram last night and answered a ton of questions from the fans. So uh, if you missed it or if you haven't seen them yet, I'm going to cover all the questions here. And there's a lot of questions, and I'm going to comment on a lot of them. So this is going to be a very long video. So I do apologize in advance. You may have to watch this in shifts. But I don't mind, I'm having fun. Uh, hopefully you guys are as well. Also, in the community section of this video, we're featuring Maria. She is a Wheel of Time artist uh, that goes by the name Memo on Twitter and Instagram. So she's pretty talented, uh, and I've actually done a commission through her as well. You'll get to see that later on next month. Um, so if you've already seen the video and uh, you want to jump right in the community section to get more information about her, please do so. There's a link in the description box down below. Now, before we start anything, I do want to mention that uh, we are still doing that contest. When I hit 2,500 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away another What Up t-shirt and another What Upper bottle. That's a water bottle with the What Up logo on it. Uh, but I've also decided that I will do a live stream as well as soon as we hit 2,500, and I'll probably give the prizes away on live stream. I think that'd be kind of neat. Um, so, I don't normally do live streams. I've done the Dusty Wheel a couple times, and I like it. It's a lot of fun, but I'm terrible at being live because I take a thousand cuts and takes to do stuff because I mispronounce things all the time and I get fumbled my words and stuff. Uh, but I've decided that uh, under your advice, as well as the advice of some of the other people that helped me on the channel, that it might be a good idea to do one. Uh, and you guys want me to, so I will. Um, so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. We'll get to that, uh, you know, that threshold for the contest and live stream a little bit quicker if uh, those of you who haven't subscribed yet do so. All right. Before we start, spoiler warning, in this video we are answering, well we're not answering questions, we're talking about questions that Rafe Judkins answered last night on Instagram. So, uh, some of these questions touch on things that happen much later on in the books than you would expect. Uh, so I'm doing a spoiler warning right up until the end of A Memory of Light, just in case. That way you guys aren't shocked or surprised about any of the questions that come up during this video. Uh, although a lot of the questions are very heavy on what would happen during New Spring, The Eye of the World, and The Great Hunt. Uh, so if you haven't read at least those books, be forewarned. There are major spoilers for those and minor spoilers for later on in the series. All right, let's get on to the video. All right, so Rafe Judkins, the showrunner, went to, on to Instagram last night to answer a bunch of fans' questions. I missed it. I wasn't there for it, so I went through them all this morning, and there were some really good questions in here. We actually learned a lot about the show, uh, and so uh, we figured we'd compile them all for you here because not everybody has Instagram and not everybody's seen these yet. So let's go through them. So uh, he said he's been sick the last two weeks, but he's better, and he's answering Wheel of Time questions. So the first question is, will the show have any connection to that abomination of a pilot that Red Eagle put out? The reference to Winter Dragon that came out quite a few years ago with uh, Billy Zane. And the answer is, nope, with a big smiley face. So that's that's probably making a lot of people happy, um, even though some people had speculated that Billy Zane would be part of this project. He says nope here, so no connection at all. So, what part of the books should you be caught up on for the first season? Depends if you like to read something before you watch it or not. So in other words, what he's saying here is that this show is not being built around having to watch the books. So, and, and we all kind of figured that. It's going to be like Game of Thrones where it'll stand on its own, it'll be an adaptation, and uh, the majority of the viewers probably will not be book readers initially, but they will pick up the books afterwards. All right. So what are you finding most challenging about going from book to screen? The hardest thing is the physicality of production. In the first book alone, they go to more than 20 villages and cities. To try to do so is physically impossible for the show, so most of the work we do in the room is geographical, figuring out how to condense the story and move it through places we can physically create. Now, we know they're going to cut stuff. We've already said that, uh, and I've speculated before that village that they built was generic vil village number A, or letter A, or number one, or whatever you want to call it, uh, in that uh, they'll use that for a bunch of different villages for the first season. So this kind of confirms that, that they can't build all the villages. Uh, they'll do their best. They're probably going to cut out a lot of Matt and Rand's travel time to Caitlin. Uh, we can't wait to see Elaine, Avondela, and Min. Uh, and I, I butchered those names. I'm sorry. I'm starting to get a little sick. So uh, Me either. Three of my favorites. So they're fishing for information there. They... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to know if we're going to see Avi, Elaine, and Min. No, uh, he, did, he didn't say. Should Amazon do a better job of engaging fans' uh, love of theory and speculation? Please embrace us. Uh, he said, I love theory and speculation. What can they do to better engage you? Send, send suggestions and I'll forward them along. So uh, I have been a little critical of Amazon. Uh, not the cast and crew at all because they're fantastic, but Amazon, the parent company, uh, for how tight-fisted they've been with information. Uh, and I'm not the only one. A lot of people have. Uh, Amazon's holding everything close to the chest. So um, 
let's let's send them some information and love here and let them know that uh, we just want to know all of the things all of the time. I guess uh, I'm pretty greedy when it comes to that, and I'm sure a lot of you folks are too. Has any post-production work begun, or does that not start until filming is completed? Nope, we do it simultaneously. Before the corona hit, I was prepping two episodes, shooting two episodes, in post on four episodes, and writing season two simultaneously. So, uh, there we go. So we probably have some close to being finished or finished episodes already in the can, which is fantastic. That's really good to know. And he's writing season two. We knew that for a fact because they had shown the writer's room for season two already. Um, still officially hasn't been picked up for season two yet that we know of, but... Uh, hopes are pretty high. They're putting a lot of money behind this. So that's good to know. Will there be a soundtrack and who's composer? Of course, David Buckley. Now we knew that already. They, they announced that a little while ago. Uh, plus a few incredible musical guests we've already had. Now that makes me excited. So uh, not just will it have, they have a composer for a soundtrack, they will have other musical guests too. Uh, somebody famous, uh, somebody who's very talented, we don't know. And I really, really hope that uh, we, we get to see some people that are pretty big in the industry. That'd be fantastic. Are Min and Elaine in season one? And he wrote back, the wheel weaves is the wheel wills. So he, he's not letting us know they're in season one yet. Yet. He's, he's not telling you anything just yet. Are you going to merge Min and Elaine? Hell no. There we go. Put that theory to bed. A lot of people have said that they're going to merge certain characters, including myself. Uh, and um, I've been very vocal that they probably will. But Min and Elaine, I can't see them merging them. The the triumvirate of, of women that Rand uh, does uh, get together with is probably still intact, according to uh, everything we've read so far. So we know they're going to be two separate characters. That's good. First moment you were speechless on set. The very first time walking into Emmons Field with my mom. Now... I would be speechless walking into that, uh, especially as a fan of the books, and Rafe is a fan of the books. Uh, we know that for sure. Uh, that's been mentioned quite a few times. So uh, walking onto that set would be absolutely amazing. I couldn't, couldn't even imagine the emotions he could have went through that day. Is Matt fluent in the old tongue yet? We've had a couple cast members speak it already, and they nailed it. So that's really good, because we know that for sure in the first couple of books, uh, again, we're not sure if it's first book, first two books, prequel first two books that they're covering. Uh, a few characters do spout it here and there, including uh, some of the Forsaken or Chosen. Uh, and, uh, you know, to say they've already done it on the screen is fantastic. I can't wait to see that. It's really cool. Which character has your favorite costume so far? Ooh, this is tough. <laughs> and he says Bornhold. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, a white cloak uh, with, you know, that that's going to look really good on the screen. It's going to look really, really sharp. Shiny, white... Uh, beautiful armor. Uh, I can't wait to see them portraying the skin. I don't like them. I mean, no offense or anything. The white cloaks, they're all terrible. Uh, but, you know, they're going to look really nice in the screen. All right. How is the cast and crew weathering the pandemic? Our team at Prague did an amazing job of getting everyone out and keeping them safe, and now everyone's home, and we all live on Instagram. So that's true. So if you guys don't have Instagram, uh, I, I would maybe get downloaded just for the sake of interacting with the cast and crew and seeing what they're up to because they do post quite heavily on social media. Uh, Twitter is not so much. Uh, I'm very, very active on Twitter and I don't see uh, as much on Twitter as we see on Instagram. Although a lot of the folks on Twitter take their stuff on Instagram and put it on Twitter for them. So we do get to see everything they post there as well. Who is your favorite Forsaken? <laughs> I love the ladies. So he goes through all, all the women Forsaken. Uh, and Ishmael holds a special place in my heart with more time I spend with him. So there is a little bit of a hint here. Uh, we know for sure we're going to see Ishmael in the first season. Um, and that is kind of a spoiler moment when it comes to people who haven't read the books uh, before. Because we know for sure that uh, if you read the entire series who Ishmael is and, and how it works out. But this is letting us know that they're going to play at least that part true to the books. Which is really nice. Uh, what's been your favorite shooting location so far? Slovenia, spectacular stuff there, and Slovenia is beautiful. Uh, I have not seen it firsthand, but I've seen a lot of pictures, and some of my friends have been there, uh, and they've raved about it. So, uh, yeah, I, I can understand why it would be so, so pretty. Yes or no? Have you had to make any cuts, be it to a scene or character that has been painful for you? Yes. Now, we knew this was going to happen. It's an adaptation. They're going to cut stuff. It's it's bound to happen. Um, Brandon Sanderson has already gone on record in an interview and said that Rafe has made some decision, decisions that may not be popular with some of the fan base, but they are necessary. Now, uh, when we watch the show, when I watch the show, I'm keeping a full open mind. I love the Wheel of Time series. I lived it for 30 years. However... This is an adaptation, and I'll just be happy to see it on the screen. It'll be like watching the Marvel movies versus the comics. It'll become its own thing, and I'm really happy to see that. How are you planning to handle the visualization of the weaves? Any little tidbits? We are trying to stay as true to the books as possible. I've been giving a bunch of VFX folks long... Uh, 
diatribes about channeling weaves, threads, earth versus air, etc. And the early stuff has started coming in. It looks fucking awesome. I screamed when Roseman started channeling. Oh my god. So this this makes me happy and excited. So we, we've talked about post-production and VFX a few times on the show. Uh, and I have always said that there's no way they're going to do channeling without doing CGI. It's, it's impossible, pretty much. But if Rafe's happy with it, and I mean, uh, Rafe's, Rafe's an experienced showrunner, like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's, he's done a lot of stuff. And if he's happy with it, especially with the high quality of some of the other stuff he's done, I'm, I'm pretty pumped to see it now. I'm excited. I'm no longer nervous about how they're going to portray that stuff on the screen. Uh, I, I've come to the fact, the realization that there are enough experienced and um, thoughtful people as part of the show that they're going to make this look good. So this is exciting. Similar to Tom performing at an old inn, what other iconic moment filmed stands out to you? Ran and Tom, Ran and Tam walking through the Westwood. Now that opening scene, amazing. That would be just them walking through, talking before they see the fade in the first uh, first chapter of the first book. Uh, makes me, uh, it gives me chills to even think about that. Um, I am very excited when this, like, for this to come out. Like, I can't wait. Blink twice if Min is in season one, and he blinks twice. So there you go. Confirmation that Min has been cast. Uh, she's in season one. She's probably already filmed a bunch of stuff uh, because she shows up long before uh, where they're at currently. Um, and so everybody that has talked about, oh, they're going to cut Min, they're going to cut this, they're going to cut that. She's not cut. She's in the show. So we just don't know who's cast as her yet. Um, Will Jeff Probst be one of the Aiel? Can you make some calls? <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, Rafe got his start on Survivor many, many years ago. I won't say how many because it'll embarrass him and myself. Um, if he dyes his hair red. So, yeah, um, Jeff Probst is the host of Survivor, for those of you who don't know. And, uh, yeah, that, that would be really neat to see people like that have cameos in the show. Uh, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'd love a cameo. Uh, it's going to happen? Probably not. Um, but that's pretty cool. Can we expect a trailer for the show anytime soon? Probably not for a long while, sadly. Now, before uh, the situation in the world kind of took hold of everyone, uh, I was speculating we'd see a trailer by summer uh, because um, I knew they did post-production as they went along and they would have some stuff finished and they'd want to do some some kind of promotion, at least a teaser anyway, probably at one of the big cons. Now, with everything being canceled pretty much or on hold or speculating to be canceled uh, and pretty much the whole world holding its breath right now, um, they may still be able to work in a trailer because it's stuff that you can do in a closed environment. However, would they release it? Probably not. Um, I know that a lot of movies and television shows have been pushed back. Uh, the release dates have been pushed back quite heavily because of what's going on because it's hard to make money if no one can leave their houses. Can you guys do a big Wheel of Time Wednesday announcement during the hiatus to keep all fans hyped instead of... all? Oh, okay. They probably just didn't finish typing that. Yeah, it would cheer us all up and have some fun news. So... Tomorrow's Wednesday. Will we get a big announcement tomorrow? Uh, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, he did say that uh, he would love to give us an announcement here. So hopefully he gets some permission and lets us know something tomorrow or next Wednesday. Uh, I'd love to see castings for the Royal Family, Indorian Royal, Royal Family, Min, uh, Varen, my favorite character. I want to see who's cast as Varen. Come on. <laughs> uh, is Lang going to be as much or an absolute stud in the show as he is in the books? You've seen it at, at Daniel Henry, right? So, uh, for those of you who don't know, Daniel Henney uh, plays Lan, uh, and he is also on Criminal Minds. So, if you haven't watched Criminal Minds over the last five years or so, he's been a staple in that show. Watch him there. He is a fantastic actor, and he I think he's going to be able to play the, the brooding man's man type thing that, that Lan is very well. Any funny behind-the-scenes stories? Uh, I once walked up to Roseman's dummy to say hello, and then pretended to check its makeup and told everyone they were doing great work. Uh, so that's great. So we know that, um, you know, funny things happen on set all the time. He covered this one up pretty good, but now they're all going to laugh at him for it. So there you go. Well, we have to wait till Season 2 to see any Aiel other than Rand. So that's, like I said, there's going to be some spoilers here. First couple books, that's, that's one of the spoilers. Um... Nope, and the one you see will shock you. Ha ha, Amazon shouldn't let me be on here while I'm all cooped up for a week. So, we're going to see an Aiel in the first season. So, who could it be? Uh, in the first book, we don't really see any Aiel at all. Second book, yeah, there's, there's, there's... No, we do see some Aiel. I mean, who are we going to see, though? He says, he says it will shock you. So, is it going to be who we think it is? Uh, I don't want to say too much without giving certain scenes of the book away. Uh, but... I'm thinking flashbacks, New Spring, we might see somebody big. Uh, 
one of the bigger clan chiefs or wise ones uh, in the flashbacks uh, to set them up for later on. That's that's my guess when he's talking about this, because he's saying it'll shock us. It's not going to be someone who we expect. I think we'll see a flashback and we'll see someone at the Battle of Shining Walls that maybe we shouldn't have seen. All right. Robert Jordan writes a lot of internal headspace stuff. What's one hint on how the show will handle that? <laughs> That's the biggest difficulty of any novel adaptation, figuring how to make the internal monologue come out clearly to the audience. A lot of the changes we make and the stories we tell differently are designed to serve exactly that purpose, showing you what those characters' internal monologues from the books are without saying them out loud in exposition. So, this is something I've wondered myself. Uh, there's a whole lot of chapters of just people talking to themselves in their head and monologuing on and on uh, in the book series, and you can't, you can't do that. It doesn't make for an exciting show. So... They're saying that things, some things are going to change to show that stuff. That makes sense to me. It's 100%. You have to show the emotion rather than just hear someone talk or else uh, it, it's like you watching me. Not as exciting. Are you using taller actors to portray the Aiel or camera trickery? Trying to get tall folks, but I'm less concerned with height and more concerned with acting ability, which makes me happy. Uh, the better actors and actresses should be the one playing those characters, the ones that better suit and fit the roles, uh, rather than how they look physically. And I've said that since day one. Uh, their physical appearance really should be secondary to how well they can portray the role uh and like you said we, we've all seen lord of the rings with the hobbits and gandalf uh elijah wood is not hobbit sized make sense since jordan comms canceled can we get maybe an extra treat next month sure what do you want so this is, goes back into the wheel of time wednesday question um hopefully we get something maybe next month uh i'm hoping for earlier than that honestly but we'll see do you have a favorite uh, wise one, Abby. So, again, another spoiler warning, uh, uh, but uh, Abby's amazing in the books. Uh, she's she's really, really good. I can't wait to see who they get to play her because she is, out of out of the, th the, the three women that Rand is involved with in the books, she's my favorite, honest to God. Like, I, I love her the most. Don't really like Elaine that much. Sorry for whoever's playing Elaine. Maybe I'll like, maybe I'll like her better when you bring her to the screen. Uh, would you? What would you say to CGI to practical ratio is going to be? Trying to do as much in camera as we possibly can. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Rafe. Thank you so much, cast and crew. Uh, huge fan of practical effects, and I think they look way better than CGI, unless CGI is done perfectly. So if they're trying to do as much in camera as they possibly can, that means as much practical effects as they can, um, which makes me very happy. How are you handling sword forms and their names? Well, we have a real sword master on the show who walks into every room and tests out everything as a weapon. He could most definitely kill me with any item in my office. That's fantastic. So they have Jason Bourne working for them. Um, but that's good to know that they have someone who's actually experienced in this and someone who is there to make everything authentic and look real, which is really cool because they can just flail about like Shannara, Sword of Truth. Ugh, I gag a little bit even saying the Sword of Truth series, uh, The Seeker. But... Uh, you don't want any flailing about. You wanted this to look really nice and really cool, and they have someone who's experienced in that to show that. That makes me happy. All right, so how are the horses on set? Is Mandarb spectacular? They are so great. Honestly, I love her horses. Mandarb and Aldiab are downright sexy. That's that's great to hear. I've seen some pictures of the horses on Instagram and on Twitter, and they look really good. I know literally nothing about horses. You can show me a donkey or a pony and be like, that's a cool horse. But he's, he's excited about them, which makes me happy. When will we get more casting announcements to hold us over? I'll try to get them out something soon. A lot of folks in all departments are affected by the state of the world right now, though, so I can't promise a timeline. Now, that makes sense. Uh, we as fans are, you know, we're all cloistered at home and we're like, well, we want more information now. You're not filming, so you have time to do other things. You have to remember that these folks are in the same state that we're in. Everyone in the world is pretty much, this is an equalizer for everyone. We're all kind of stuck. Um, so for them to work from home, some of them can, some of them can't. Uh, it's probably a... a you know, a Herculean effort of coordination to do certain things like this when they're announcing castings and stuff. So uh, just be patient. Uh, I know I'm being patient right now. It's hard, especially considering right now when you have nothing else to do but twiddle your thumbs, some some people, but it's it's all we can do. Will we see the prologue from the Eye of the World on screen in season one? And his answer is you will hear that phrase. So uh, are we going to see Winter Dragon? No, no, we won't. But we're going to hear certain things um, from the book that are going to mean a lot to the to the readers um may not so much to people who haven't read the books before but this gives me hope that they're going to keep certain things that are going to make us very happy in the book what has been your favorite set so far fall <laughs> uh i'm going to guess and this is a guess uh so 
I'll come back to this video in a year's time when the show's out that Fall Dare will be my favorite set as well. Um, I'm excited to see it on screen. It's going to be epic. Keeneland, cool. Um, Berlin, cool. Faldera, probably amazing. Um, and maybe Tarvalon will be trumping Faldera. I don't know. Please tell me you've cut Narg. What's wrong with you? Who wants who wants Narg cut? Uh, never. Uh, good. That's, that's a fantastic answer. We've speculated before they might cut him uh, because it, it really serves no purpose to the show other than the fan service, but they're going to keep him in, so... Thank you, Ray, for the fan service. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, Narek has been a staple of this community forever, and I can't wait to see him articulate uh, how he's smart on screen. To what extent has Harriet McDougall been involved with the project? Well, she's a consulting producer, so she's been out to Prague on the sets and reads all the scripts and sends me her notes on them. She and Maria are hugely helpful for maintaining the truth of the series and always keep me honest when it comes to things that change too much. That makes me very happy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Harriet is Robert Jordan's widow and was his editor at Tor. Uh, she was heavily involved in all things Wheel of Time from day one. So she's probably the best person on the planet to know his real intentions and to know what he really expected of something, uh, of a project of the scope. So to hear that she's involved, she's reading the scripts, she's been to set, makes me very excited that they're doing this right. Is any aspect of the show still in development, or has it all stalled because of the virus? A lot can be done virtually. I'm still doing VFX editing in the Season 2 virtual writer's room, and I can do that in pajamas. Like I said earlier, you're looking at uh, some people working from home, and Brave obviously is working from home. Uh, so that's good to know that they're still chugging along on the show. Will Min, Elaine, and Avi have to be combined into a single character? <laughs> <laughs> this is a question that a lot of people have asked. Uh, girl, you crazy. I'm not going to combine huge characters like that. Maybe sometimes a minor character folded into a more major one to make better use for cast, but nothing nuts. Uh, so when he says that, am I here in theory? I think so. Uh, but that's good to know that all three of those main characters will still be in the series. They'll be there because they all offer a lot to the show. I mean, I've expressed uh, my dislike of Elaine and, to a lesser extent, Min in some cases. Um, for some things that they've done in the books, uh, but they're very important. I, I never discount that they're important, so I'm glad they're not being cut. Robert Jordan created thousands of characters. Given that you feel the, given that, did you feel the need to create new characters? So for those of you who don't know, 2,782 named characters in the book series. That's a lot of freaking characters. Anyone new is inspired by characters in the books or a number of characters combined. If we paid to cast all speaking roles in the book, we could only afford a radio play. Now, I said that before, uh, they're going to have to combine some people because the logistics of 2,782 people on screen over the course of 5, 10, 12 years, however long it's going to be, is ridiculous. It won't happen. Um, but it's good to know that they're going to combine characters and they're not just creating new ones uh, out of thin air for no reason. So, so far, what is your favorite prop in the show? The Great Serpent Ring, we all want one. Yeah, Rafe, I want one too. <laughs> I think it'd be amazing. Uh, I can't wait to see uh, the official, new official merchandise that you guys are going to release. I know there was Wheel of Time merchandise from before, uh, but the license have all expired now. Uh, I can't wait for all the new merch to come out. Uh, and so you guys know I will be previewing pretty much almost everything that comes out on the channel uh barring cost so uh i would have loved to do a full video on the the book sleeves that came out recently because that's our newest wheel of time merchandise but i can't afford 900 dollars on a set of books that's that's crazy hopefully these things are a little bit cheaper <laughs> uh will loyal portray the ogre oh year species or will he humanize for screen he's no gear he's gonna be big he's gonna be like teacup shaped eyes like it's I'm glad to know that they're going to keep him true to what he is and not make him a small person. How involved, if involved at all, is Sam Anderson in the writer's room? Brand is hugely helpful. I've talked to him before we started season two while he was in Prague to get advice and he reads all the scripts and gives notes. He's incredibly thoughtful and understands the process of adaptation and what's required from it. More on that in a bit. I feel so lucky to have him involved. I would have him do more if I couldn't make him. So that's really good to know. Sanderson is involved. He's gone on record saying a couple times Rafe is choosing to cut or change some things that will be unpopular, but they're very necessary. So it, to me, he understands it's an adaptation and it's going to happen. It can't be shot for shot remake. remake. And we have to temper our uh, expectations. It's not going to be exactly what everyone thinks it's going to be when it hits the screen. Because um, no matter what you think in your mind it should be, it's going to be something a little bit different. Uh, kind of like the castings with some, some people are very upset about some of the castings. I think they nailed them all personally. But everyone thinks something different in their heads. Uh, so he's saying here that Brand has been helpful and he understands an adaptation. That's a good sign because it means that he knows what to cut and what to amalgamate uh, with keeping the, the story keep going along. 
What words of hope would you offer a fan afraid the show will cut out a lot of content? So this goes along with the last question. I genuinely think we are cutting less than most people think. When I see people ask questions like, are you cutting Min? It blows my mind. I don't know how you do an adaptation without some of these characters. I think it'll be a bit of the smaller stories you'll miss. You can't have Rand and Matt travel to many, many inns in their travels across the countryside, for instance. It's just not producible. So that will be more of what you miss, I think, and the books always exist to read for that. So what he's saying here is a lot of the smaller stories and plot lines will be cut out. Um, think Lord of the Rings and Tom Bombadil. Is that, that's the best way I can say it to anybody who, who, who may not understand. Um, it was in the book. It didn't really matter that it was cut. And when you watch the movies, you don't notice it. So we're going to see a lot of stuff that, as hardcore fans, will notice it's being cut. But someone who maybe has read the series once, or is partway through it, or has not read it at all, they're not going to notice as much. And um, it won't in, impact their experience or their enjoyment of it at all, which makes me happy. I think Bella is such an important character. Will the same horse play Bella through the series? <laughs> We've already had to have two Bellas. Turns out that a horse for riding on film is not the same as a horse for pulling a cart, and she must do both. Makes 100% sense. Um, I, I'm not too worried. It's probably not hard to get horses that look similar. Now that you've met them, uh, settle the score. Who's better with women? Rand, Matt, or Perrin? I think they'd all say it's the other. That's a great answer. It's just like in the books. They all think that <laughs> the, each one is better than, than themselves in the books. Will the show be understandable for those who didn't read the books? This is important. That's the idea. If there are little things they don't get, though, luckily Google exists. So, um, I've said it before, they're making the show in part for the fans. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, we're all going to like and enjoy it. But they have to make it watchable for someone who doesn't know anything about the series at all to make any kind of money. Uh, because if every Wheel of Time fan in the world watched the show, uh, you're looking at... Not enough viewers to keep the show going for the full however many seasons. Uh, they're going to want to get new people who have never read the books before as well. Who's your favorite Aes Sedai in the books? And you can't say Moraine, Suin, or the Wonder Girls. So many rules. I honestly love them all except Galena, that bitch. I agree with you there. Galena's horrible. Uh, Alana, Leandra, and Varen are probably my top three. Uh, move that. Varen's top. She's 100% over Alana and Leandrin. I don't like her at all. Uh, <laughs> and... and, and and Swan, uh, there's so many I love. Uh, Sherim and Pevra, Pevera. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of really nice, great characters. Uh, I think they were trying to fish for who's his favorite on screen, but he's talking about the books. Uh, and that was the end of his, uh, his Q&A. So sorry I didn't get to answer everyone's questions. Generally, more than a 1,000 came through in like 15 minutes. I will try to do this again soon. Hope everyone is safe and sound. It has a boyfriend who makes some dinner while they're sick. If you don't, mine is for sale. Uh, there you go. So he, he was told dinner was ready. Here we go. So um, that's the end of his Q&A. Uh, a lot of really great stuff. And believe it or not, a lot of new information that we didn't really know before. We now know Min is in it. We now know Elaine and Abby are in it. Nobody's being combined. We know that a lot of the cuts and changes are due to production and money which makes a hundred percent sense and that they're trying to keep the core of the stories together so i'm very excited about this i'm really happy and i'm looking forward to a wheel of time wednesday all right, so before we get to the community section, I just want to let you guys know I appreciate you guys watching the videos. So long as you watch the videos and like what I'm doing, I will continue to do it because I'm having a blast doing this, especially stuck in my house. Um, so, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. We want to hit that 2,500 mark for that contest and live stream. Uh, if you like the video, click the like button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of the content I produce here. And let me know what you would like to see or change. Uh, keep everything constructive and, uh, and, and I will certainly try to action everything I can, of course. So I want to thank you all very much and let's get on to the community section. Hi everyone, welcome to the community section of my video. Today I'm featuring a very, very talented Wheel of Time artist, uh, Memo. Now, she draws Wheel of Time characters in the style of Disney characters. Uh, she does chibis, she does regular uh, portraits, things like that, and she's super talented. As you can see here on the screen, here is our uh, some of our Emon Fielders, uh, um, and then Galad and Gawain, and then we have a few more of the characters here. Uh, they're, they're really good, like she's fantastic. Now. She's been drawing real time characters since 2014, uh, and uh, lately she's been doing basically chibis. So she posts them on her Tumblr, which I've linked down below in the description box. She also posts on her Instagram, again, another link down below in the description box. And if you want to commission something from her, 
which I've done, um, and uh, I can't wait to see it when it's finished. Uh, all she needs is a reference picture and what type of picture do you want? Do you want it to be chibi? Do you want it just to be a, a drawing? Things like that. If it's a Wheel of Time themed character, do you want it to be a warder, an Aes Sedai, uh, Forsaken, in, in whatever vein it is so she can do that. Now here's information about her commission slots. Uh, US 35 for one character, uh, half price for any additional characters on top of that. Uh, she takes PayPal uh, and you can send her the money that way and she has a link for that if you don't have a PayPal account. Uh, I've left that information as well down below in the description box. So just DM her on Twitter uh, or through her Instagram or uh, Tumblr if you want to get a hold of her and actually do a commission up for a piece of artwork and they're really really cool. I really like them. Um, anyway, so Thank you all very much for sticking with me to the end of this very long video. Um, and I hope that you've uh, learned some new things about uh, the first season of the show. I know I certainly did when I read these questions. I was quite happy with them. And uh, I want to thank you all again. And here's to many more.